Welcome to this task on query optimization using subqueries. My name's Andy Wicks, and in this video, we're going to have a look at how you make your queries run a little faster. But before we get into that, there's something that I need to explain. Let's start with an example. We'll be using the secondhand bookshop scenario through for this as well. But supposing you wanted to see the publisher, title and price for each book. You'd have a query like this. Select publisher, title, price from publisher, title and book because those are the tables that link together and they're the ones that we need to get the publisher, title and price fields. And we're going to link those on publisher ID and title ID. So this isn't a particularly complicated example. But in the previous video, when we combined all the records in the table publisher with all the records in the table title and with all the records in the table book, we got a huge number. Now, our example is small. The number of records in each table is only 10, 430 and 715 respectively. But if we multiply those numbers together, we get a massive 3 million plus records that need to be searched to create a result set to give us those fields that we actually wanted. And this is a huge amount of resource that's being taken up for something that is very little. So query optimization. This is a big area and we're only going to scratch the surface here to give you an idea of what it's all about. But you can probably do master's degrees in this area. It's used to make queries more efficiently and therefore run faster. The trick is to keep the number of records created in each view as small as possible. If you're not sure what a view is, please see the video before this on views and queries. This makes the binary combinations much smaller. So can we do better than the 3 million plus? Well, yes, we can. We can use subqueries and inner joins, and I'm going to explain both separately, and then I'm going to return to subqueries because they also have another advantage. Before explaining these, though, suppose we only wanted publisher and title. We could have select publisher title from publisher title and link them via the publisher ID. This is part of the query that we were looking at just now. If we did that, that would give an initial 4,300 records because there are 10 records in publisher and 430 records in a title. But these would produce a view with 430 records, assuming that each title had a publisher, after the select conditions are applied. So the result set is only 430. If we used that view to select the matching records with book, we would have only 300,000 records to search, a tenth of those we had to search before. The SQL gets bigger, but here is the start of that query. But you'll notice I've only got from book. That's because what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the next view that we would normally have with another query. I'm going to do a select publisher title title ID from publisher and title where the publisher ID equals the publisher ID. This red text, this red query creates another view and that view is then combined with book to create the result set where another set of conditions title ID equals title ID is then applied. So what we get are two views here book and the result of the select query and that produces a far smaller record set. Whilst it's more complicated it is much quicker we're searching a tenth of the records, so a query takes a tenth of the time. Now, this doesn't matter with the small example we've got here, 
But imagine a banking system with tables that contain millions of records. That would be a huge time saving. But there's more. There's also the possibility of doing this by using an inner join. Can we produce, say, a list of authors and their books? This requires links between the table's author, author title and title. The trick here is to do the smallest link first. In this case, author to author title will return fewer records. So we start with that. That's because author, one author can produce many titles. So titles will be bigger. So here's this inner join. And whilst it looks complicated, I'm going to go through it a bit at a time. We're going to select last name, forename and title. Those are the fields that we want. From. And now our inner join replaces all the from bits because what we're doing is creating separate views. So we're going to have author, inner join author title, on and then the author IDs. And that will create a view that contains those authors and author title records that match on author ID. So we have one record set here. We can then go on and combine that with another view that's created by linking title to it. So we can in a join title to that and linking via the title IDs. And by doing that, we have in effect the same thing as doing the subquery. Now this looks a little more complicated, but once you get used to using it, it's actually a very efficient way of writing a query. Much more efficient than making the primary and foreign keys equal to each other. But there's another advantage of subqueries. We can also use subqueries to make the logic simpler. In some cases, subqueries are the only way to get the information that you want. Now, we played with the intelligence test in the first weeks of a course, and question five wanted those students who had passed everything. Now, this is an awkward query because what we're looking for is only those students who don't have a refer or fail somewhere. And that is quite complicated logic until we use a subquery. You see, the intelligence test question five asks for those students who've passed all their work so far. So they've got a D, M or P for all their grades. So select distinct name. OK, that's easy enough. From student, where student ID not in. And now this is the clever bit. What we do is we find those students who have a refer or fail. So we get the student ID from grade where the grade is equal to R or the grade is equal to F. That produces a list of students who have an R or an F in their profile somewhere. Now we compare that to the list of all students from student S, and we want the people who are not in that list of students that has a failed grade. So here, the logic is much easier if we find those who have a refer or fail, and then take away those students from the overall list of students, than it would be to find all those who have a P, M or D. But why use subqueries here? Well, a subquery is used where you want to simplify the logic. For example, in the intelligence test, where we wanted a list of those students who had passed everything. It's easier to find those who failed something, and then you can subtract that list from the full list of students. Thank you for watching.